Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Coach's Corner. This week, we're going to be going over the week of Steve Buffs by Waidu. So really excited by that. Uh, obviously, Steve is kind of, I would say, considered the strongest character in the game by most of the community. Um, and finding out more tech for the character, obviously, is pretty impactful. But there's a bunch of other topics that go along with that because, in my opinion, or I, I, I mean, it's pretty factual. Like the top Steves right now, they don't really use that much of the tech. So the other side of the coin is, well, are these Steve players even going to use the tech? Do they even need the tech, right? So, yeah, I'm excited to talk about this topic. And I mean, I know I know some people don't get too excited to talk about Steve, but it is the best character in the game, whether you like it or not. And tech is tech, right? Mm -hmm. And this character, we all know that this character has the most tech by far in the game. So, yeah, how are you guys doing? Doing well. Excited to go over the week of Steve Tech. I, dude, I love Waidu. I think he is, he's enthusiastic to fault at times, uh, but I think it's super interesting to just have people throw new things out there. And even if there were some things that didn't stick the landing entirely, I think just getting people to think about tools in new ways is just so potent. And I think, so coming from a character who has a lot of tech as well, I think just like the approach of like throwing something out, not because it's necessarily good, but because it gets people thinking, I think it's super powerful. And a lot of the more recent breakthroughs in like Shulk tech as well have been like from a similar point of view where someone just says something that again, doesn't stick the landing, but it inspires other people to kind of like build off of that. So uh, yeah, I I'd love to go over this with you guys. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I share the same sentiment, right? It's it's very important to have this. I mean, we talked about this a little bit when uh, Slingshot came out, right? Like, this is stuff that's been yes. used before, right? But a lot of times you got to have that showmanship, right? You got to do a little bit extra, really get people to actually like for it to stick, right? And then once it's something that sticks, people are more likely to kind of put some more investment in it. I mean, even going back in the day, like for any competitive game, like when you just get see the hype around something, it just got start you start labbing more, right? Like sometimes you'll just lab stuff that's not even the stuff that you were looking at per se, right? But just like um, to your guys' point, it gets people thinking, it gets people to start moving, it gets people getting in that paradigm of like trying to like learn and push rather than simply just you know just play, which unfortunately is a big issue when it comes into like smash in general because the atrocity that is our training mode so a lot of times people just simply it's just i'm gonna play 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 it's a very natural thing in the community so whenever people come out like this this is what gets people back into training mode obviously thank god we've gotten um, an infinitely better version of training mode now too um so i, I do think that's going to push a lot of people just to do more things and we're kind of seeing it here and there but um yeah this is very interesting because uh, despite it called the week of Steve buffs, uh, there's a lot of just universal tech, right? It just so happens because Steve can create platform in platform fighters. <laughs> He's really good at doing it, right? So um, it's interesting. But yeah, I'm excited to go through it. All right. Well, let's uh, start off. I know Rams is going to be doing the explanation and we're going to try to get our editors as well to get some on screen assistance for everyone as well. So if you guys haven't heard of this or haven't seen any of this, you'll be educated right now. Yeah, so welcome to day one of the Steve buffs, introducing CRUD, also known as C-Stick Reverse Up Tilt After Down Throw Dash, which is a horrible name. Uh, but basically, <laughs> it is a way to get a full combo after a down throw uh, because you combo into an up tilt directly, which normally isn't possible because you're just like a few frames off. But by uh, doing a C-Stick Reverse Tilt, which is... Uh, it, it's a little bit tight to get, but uh, by doing that, you're going to get, uh, well, basically a full up tilt combo starter, which is huge for Steve, of course. Um, yeah, so this doesn't work on every character. There are a few characters that it doesn't work on because I think I think it's like just the, the physics. I think, funnily enough, Cloud is one of the characters that it doesn't work on because he just goes into his landing lag, which crouches on the up tilt. I think it's, uh, oh, it says on screen, Cloud, Sheik, and Pichu, it does not work on. And there's a few one-frame escapes that it doesn't work on either. But as he shows later in the video, against some of the one-frame escapes, you can do a raw up tilt, uh, or sorry, raw up air, and, you know, basically get an entire combo as well. Um, I thought this one was quite mind-blowing 
Um, it, I think it's not it's not necessarily a tech because it's just like a C stick reverse tilt. Um, but C stick reverse tilts are very hard to do, and I know um, there are some tricks to make it easier. I think it was uh, Pop the Bayo who showed an uh, sort of option select at the corner where if you crouch mm -hmm. with a diagonal, yeah, then you can press A to get like a down tilt or a C stick to get like a turnaround up tilt, right? Um, so that's like that's an easier way to do your turnaround tilts, but this is just like getting the right angle on your C stick, which is hard, just hard to do. Not a lot of people use reverse tilts for that reason. Um, of course, why do uh, just just a side note? He uses a box, so a lot of these things are kind of like box things, not exclusively, but like they're easier on box or just more realistic in general. Um, yeah, I think I think again, I think this was quite mind blowing because so so to me, one of the biggest weaknesses for Steve is that his normals are generally a little limited. I think once he gets diamond, of course, like back air and forward smash, especially become ridiculous. But if we think about like his neutral in terms of like, you know, like he doesn't really wall you out with like, you know, uh, an aerial like Marfa or Lucina would. He doesn't really control the ground with, like a sweeping forward tilt the way Marfa or Lucina would, right? Um, his aerials are more supplementary. And then he kind of like uh, uses his movement, his specials to kind of do the main leg work. Um, but this, well, a grab, uh, not necessarily normal, but in the realm of normals, um, it gives him a way to play, well, quote unquote, footsies for high reward in a way that is uh i wouldn't say good because grab you know it's still a tighter grab but it's at, it's at least at least approximating uh like standard footsies um especially with the the huge reward backing it up so that's my take i think it, it's an interesting uh development even if it's not tech what, what do you guys think uh i i like it i mean it's simple i mean the concept of it is pretty simple the execution might be a little harder um, if you're not on a box right but i i don't think it's that hard i think this is pretty realistic to do in, in actual tournament matches and you just go into a ladder uh i do think when i'm just thinking about in general because what do we usually see from steve that's going to be my first question right off of down throws usually we see like down throw into either jabs on fast fallers so like on mm -hmm. fox i probably wouldn't want to do this because i want to jab into a fair off stage and go for an edge guard right so there's specific matchups where it's like oh well kind of what do you want now you have a ladder option instead of a corner carry option um usually we see steve do like down throw fair and fair has a very high sdi multiplier so if someone does down throw fair maybe they get to SDI a little bit more. So here you still get the SDI out of the uh, up tilt up air um, sequence, but it has way less of a multiplier or like influence. I don't know the exact terminology, but um, but yeah, it just gives another route from down throw, which I think is fantastic. Even if it's if it's a little harder to execute, maybe you don't always go for this. Uh, you have your other down throw conversions that still do uh, quite a bit of damage. So if you're feeling a little nervous, you have that option. If you're feeling a little feisty, if you've been in the lab and you're really confident, Go for the ladder, right? Yeah. So uh, it just adds on to the options. What, what do you think, Tony? So I think this is the most likely to be implemented, mostly because you can essentially string it together so consistently from the down throw. And I think it's more in long, more in tune with the skills that Steve players are willing to use and go with. Uh, so, and it's also toward a specific goal that Steve players tend to work towards. So anything that can focus on getting up tilts is something that Steve players tend to gravitate towards. Uh, so I do expect this to be implemented. Oh, what do you think, Ben? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like you said, like out of all the, the tech really is kind of like just like a very standard one. And so uh, I would hope that this is, becomes like more utilized over time. Um, it's one of those things that's kind of funny because I think that a lot of characters, once they realized they could do that, like you can go and do pivot like up tilts. A lot of people were always trying to see how they could do that and do their combo routes per se. So it's like, it's fascinating that one wasn't kind of just more well known or like just like done as like done more. Um, I do believe Yofi did it, but like Yofi just does wild stuff. Yofi anyways. does everything. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, crazy. it's yeah. funny because he was one of the first Steve's I ran into online um so like and i just like played played him for hours and i think he just stayed because he's like dude this guy's not leaving <laughs> like he probably <laughs> just buys people and they just leave right so like it's just mm. funny so there's so many times i'll see stuff and i'm just like yeah man this, i've seen this a long time around. ago and it's just like mm. yeah can, can i figure it out i was like oh yeah that's yofi that that makes so much sense now so yeah that, i think uh 
one of the things that we haven't said that I think is also important in in this tech is that it's done out of a fro animation. So a lot of issues with tech is that people don't do it because it's hard to integrate tech into your usual play, right? So the reason why what Mutis is doing is impressive is because he cannot like mentally prepare himself to do tech and then do it. He has to react to something and then just like just put it out there, right? There's no mental preparation. Whereas for something like this, you can like, you know, you're grabbing someone, it's like a frame 15 ish grab. And then there's the entire anvil dropping down and you have all right. that time to mentally prepare. Like I'm going to do the tech now. So that's going to make it a lot more accessible as well. So yeah, crud, uh, in my opinion, pretty impactful tech. Uh, you guys want to move on to the arguably the least impactful tech. Yeah, um, yeah. let's go for it. Withing. Withits, uh, aka why do pivoting? Um, I'm not gonna lie. When I when I first saw this, I thought I, I was hype as as heck wait, because wait, it Ryan, looks could like. You, it, could you restart that? Sorry, I like fucked up on sure, sure. my computer. Hold on. I'm like trying to go like this. I just don't want my computer to die and cry as we Got lose it. another episode. Ugh, there's no way I'm not losing this one. Ugh, okay, All right. we're plugged in. W. Brave. Okay, right. okay, we just have that edited. But yeah, you can start from the top of the second deck. Cool, cool, cool. So for day two, we had Wiveting, aka Why Do Pivoting. Uh, this was a tech that I was most excited for by far, uh, but also the most disappointed by because it is kind of like Steve and Joker exclusive. Um, it's it's basically perfect pivoting in, in, in what it does, right? Your character does a little pivot and uh, they're actionable. It's not... And entirely perfect pivot because it is a turnaround, whereas perfect pivot kind of like uh, you know, like you turn around and then you turn back, so it's like a 360. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a 180. Um, but it looked really cool. Now the issue is it uh well it requires pretty specific inputs. Um I know people have found ways to uh make it more consistent on Genki controller. So essentially, I don't know if you guys have heard of pivot walking before, where like you you land with an aerial, you hold A, and then you you just like walk in a direction and you tap your C stick the other way repeatedly and your, yeah, your character is like this swirling. <laughs> yeah, yes, right, exactly. Right, it's, right. it's the taunt, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is essentially like one repetition of that in a very like controlled environment. That is that is that is the way uh, it, it has been explained to me. Um, and I think on paper, if 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 that was like universally applicable, um, it would be fucking awesome because microspacing options in Ultimate is it's kind of like exactly what we need, right? Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, the effectiveness of a single revolution, um, or half a revolution, I guess, uh, uh, let, let's say the 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 with it, uh, mm -hmm. the effectiveness is greatly impacted by your walk acceleration. Mm -hmm. And apparently, Steve and Joker are at the top there. Um, so yeah, they are the only ones that really get uh, great wall, walk acceleration. Um, so they're the only ones who get like very significant distance from the with it on top of that again it's pretty hard to do on standard controllers so all together probably not the most impactful tech guys yeah yeah it's funny i remember back in the day dude i remember my kids would do that in that brawl all the time like the crack walking essentially like no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Dupe walking right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Dupe walking. Like, yeah exactly. there's, there's Dupe walking. many names for it many names mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but yeah i remember that one a lot and yeah it was like funny because i was like hmm wonder if that can like actually be useful but for some characters but like you said majority of the cast is just like it's not even worth like the the like the distance it goes it's just not nearly enough so um yeah it's just one of those funny things where it's like oh no well, you can do it with steve that's cool and joker, and joker that's pretty hype that one's important that one's very important so two strong characters yeah yeah so i'm actually excited to see that uh, implemented a bit more with um with joker well, if the game ends up turning towards box centric, as a certain other title or titles have, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. maybe we'll see that more often. But in the meantime, I think we're going to only see this around box players. Yeah. Yeah. Box yeah. players. Um, I will also add on to like the, I don't know, just what I've observed from the FGC and Smash in general. I don't think we're going to go into a box era because everyone is just so used to GameCube controller. Um, you might see some box players. On top of that, since the Smash, like what the box that you need for Smash Brothers is different from the box that you need from for FGC, just tra traditional FGC games, you need way more buttons. So it's gonna be like harder to get. It's not gonna be as high in demand. So not a lot of companies are gonna actually go and go ahead and make it and advertise it, right? So 
Yeah, it's I hard to bring the, around too. You're, we're not even used to that, right? Like at yeah. least like you, FGC was like traditional FGC is like you're going from a stick to, to like a box, box right? Like and then sometimes you have snack box, right? I, like I have a snack box, and it's small as hell. So it's like it just feels more beneficial to move to that versus us going from a like GameCube controller to this big hefty thing, and we don't even have at least to my knowledge like a snack buttons. box like alternative one. Yeah, it's like massive. But there's so many sick like. Especially when it comes to movement, it feels like there's so many things there, like on the box, man. And yeah, it sucks because it's technically in the game, but it's stuff that is just going to be so hard to do with a GameCube controller. And then just the culture of the community, it's just going to be very hard for that to change. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fucking funny that the two best box using characters are arguably Steve and Kaziak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Isn't yeah. that like that is very funny. that's like that is that is defining. Um yeah, so I actually tried labbing this out with dupe walk, so like doing like a landing there mm -hmm. and then trying to get like a single like walk input plus turnaround. But again, it, it accelerates over time, so the impact is just like it's it's not that great. Um, yeah, I know people looked into this. I think some people found some other characters uh, that could do this, um, but overall, probably the least impactful of all the uh, all the new things that were found. So let's move on to. Uh, well, <laughs> Arcane Steve Secrets, or uh, basically various forgotten Steve Secrets. So we're going to narrate this one because there are multiple things happening here. I think uh, he starts off just showing all the different texts and Hungrybox. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think, uh, let's see, the first one was... Right, shortening your double jump from ledge duration. So you use jump block and i think the block kind of decreases your jump duration and then you get like a shallower jump back on the stage um pretty powerful because you get basically landing up airs uh if you get an air dodge it's you guys remember like in brawl how Meta and i would do like drop double jump air dodge on stage and it was just like unpunishable it kind of gives me those vibes because you know like Meta Knight. for those who don't know like Meta Knight has very low double jumps because he's a multi-jump character so what he would do in brawl is he would do like basically drop double jump air dodge on stage in brawl air dodges had almost no landing lag and it would be like basically unreactable and he it, it's like a reversal where he kind of like puts you in a mix up because he's not mixing you up from his landing right um and the shorten is really strong. He can get uh, an up air, he can get a forward air, he can get an air dodge, he can do nothing. It, it, it's kind of reminiscent of, uh, if you want to compare it to anything related to Smash Ultimate, it's kind of reminiscent of like Peach doing a ledge jump, float, cancel, fast fall, right? I, I'm sure you guys have seen you do that. He's just like a landing. Um, let's just go through all of them and then we can review afterwards. So the second thing he discussed is, is the, the nil from ledge jump, which was one I think that was known for a while, right? Um, but it's kind of crazy, right? Like again, this these are two mix-ups from ledge. And so for me personally, just my my perspective real quick, I think reversals are getting more and more powerful. So having two extra options from ledge, really strong because from a juggle, you can go off stage, go to ledge, and then if you have like a couple of strong reversal options, it's gonna be really hard to keep Steve in disadvantage, harder than it already is. Uh, and then he displays the nil out of shield, which I think is one of the cooler things that he discussed in these videos. Basically, uh, when you're in shield, you can jump nil, and then if uh, if you shield on the block, the opponent's attack will destroy the block, and then Steve is immediately actionable, uh, which allows him to punish basically anything. Um, so that's really cool. He talks about uh, Anvil refreshing ledge invincibility, which is, you know, uh, sure, small optimization, again, making his ledge a little bit better. Um, but it allows him to regrow with invincibility, even when he doesn't spawn the anvil, apparently, uh, which is crazy. Um, it's not like we hadn't have enough playing Please, games. Please, can we just Smash have Bros. a patch? Fuck. Right. <laughs> Steve! <laughs> uh, right, mining near crafting table uh, by tapping B twice. I know a lot of Steves love that find. I don't think it's very impactful. Um, <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see, this is using the pickaxe, nothing specific. Placing TNT on the platform without landing on the platform. Again, like, these are small optimizations, right? But they're, they're going to contribute to making, um, C faster. And then finally, there's TNT gambling. <laughs> um, where he says, you can just up the into the TNT and things happen. He literally says things happen. He doesn't know what happens at the time he does it. Uh, so he calls it TNT gambling because I think the upbeat 
uh has like fire property so it explodes the tnt instantly right or it, it lands on the pressure plate i don't know either or either way point being he uses tnt and then he uses his respawn invincibility to trigger it or when he puns at high percent he just explodes with the ub and you know hopes to get the explosion to get a kill while uh not dying himself so that was the arcane uh steve secrets and i'm sure okay so let's start here what do you guys think is the most impactful one out of these uh finds i th i think it's the defensive nil option it has to be yeah like, out of shield what i or i think both are very good um i think out of shield would probably be more useful overall because steve already has a plethora of options to literally not leave the ledge so this character could plank and time everyone out and do that mm -hmm. uh we haven't seen it really and i know there's the craft destroying the crafting table counterplay but at the very least steve is probably the character that can stay on the ledge the most comfortable of all the characters in the entire game and I don't know if he can do it for the whole entire game and not get punished for it because of destroying the crafting table, but he can do it mm -hmm. for a very long time until that Steve feels very comfortable getting back on the stage, whether you let him back on or you like find an opening. Uh, Out of Shield uh, is something that, if done right, it makes Steve's Out of Shield game even better. And we know that uh, Footstool Out of Shield is already very powerful on close-up shield pressure, but this could help with like maybe longer range shield pressure and stuff like that. I mean... We'll see. Uh, and I also think it just encourages Steve players to fucking learn how to nil. You can use it defensively. You can use it offensively. Like why? It does it all. Why are you not trying? Why? Why do you not care about winning? Because your character is that broken. Like you should just just care. Care about care about winning. And look at all of these crazy things you can do. But I, that's just yeah. I, I think it's just the defensive nil options really stood out to me. I knew most of the other stuff that he posted, like activating the pressure play with up tilt and stuff like that. Or the amp. I didn't know that you didn't have to spawn an anvil to get the intangibility. Like that's crazy. That's, that's hilarious. Just sounds like a coding nightmare. Like what? <laughs> that's Who? hilarious. He doesn't land on anything. Why is it getting it back? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think, Tony? So obviously, uh, nil is very good in every way possible. Uh, Ledge jump nil in particular is effective because a ledge jump nil is going to be unreactable after you account for input delay. So, and what is already a pretty strong way to get off, and then usually you can, from that position, you can still burst from there, just either through a B out of shield or just jumping over. And then from there, he's usually going to have access to iron tools or whatnot. But even if he doesn't, I believe we've discussed on this channel before how powerful for stages like uh, town and city are for being able to force your way to center well this is literally just build your own town platform on the outside and so the idea here is that it's going to allow him to essentially force his way to a given place on the stage if he really wants to if he's willing to take a hit there's nothing you can do to stop him and so essentially the whole point of what's so powerful about steve is that he's in absolute control over where he's going to be and when he's going to be there and it's generally up to the opponent to just make the best of whatever position Steve is going to give them. But ultimately, it doesn't matter what Steve gives them. It's not something that you can simply just take from him. Uh, there's no permanent disadvantage in that sense. And so he manages to turn what's supposed to be, oh, well, I have played RPS two times in a row so that I could get you into this position and then win the game off of that. That doesn't exist versus Steve. Not really. And so... That's very powerful, and I don't think it's impactful at all because I, we don't have Steve's who use now. So, the uh, not at uh, high and top tournament level on a consistent basis. So I think every now and then you're going to see a top Steve just pull one of these out of their pocketbook. Uh, I know I've seen like uh, Onin, for example, use a a ledge jump nil before. Um, I believe I've seen Akula do it before, but uh, I, it's actually relatively challenging because I don't think you can buffer it from the ledge jump. And so it's a very tight execution window. And nil, not so much. Nil in general, nil out of shield. These are fairly set timing windows that you can pretty consistently practice and actually learn to do. It's just a matter of the Steve players don't bother. They, like we've said before, you don't really have to. Uh, if you're just playing in other ways and not playing 
or maximizing your character is already getting you number one in the world. Why would you work any harder than that? Just focus on being consistent with what you're already doing, uh, minimizing what people are doing to counter what you're doing, rather than trying to keep pushing your envelope. There's no point. Uh, I think the most impactful is actually the uh, mining on crafting table, because I can't tell you how many Steve players I've seen who will just like backdash in neutral because they yeah. just don't know that you can mine on the crafting table. So that's fair. I, I think that's ironically enough the most impactful, uh, not the. <laughs> For unfortunate uh, reasons, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are low For key throwing so reasons. much shade saying that's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. Well, at the end of the day, fight back, Steve Flares. Fight back. <laughs> don't let him do you like that. <laughs> this is a perfect example of what's more impactful something that could be powerful or something that is going to be slightly powerful but actually gets used consistency mm -hmm. is key and implementing improvements is better than no improvements so yeah that's that's my word on that i uh yeah so for me personally i think again like reversals from ledge are crazy and i think both of the reversal options from ledge are in a limited enough scenario that they can reasonably be learned again right like you you grab ledge and then you can mentally prepare to do this thing instead of having to you know conjure it up on the fly uh so that's something that i think is is important as so again like i play shulk shulk has a lot of tech especially tech on ledge um and i can attest like a lot of stuff that shulk can do tech wise it's hard to do because you're just like not used to doing it on the fly um, but on ledge, you see a lot of shulks, especially recently do a lot more shulk stuff because you can just sit there and be like, okay, Ramses, I'm going to do drop double jump cycle, uh, air dodge. And then, you know, cycle cancel my landing, stuff like that. Um, so I think that is very powerful. I think in general, like I am a big believer that being strong off of ledge or out of the corner is probably the best place you can be strong at in this advantage because your juggle can transition to ledge your offstage transitions to ledge your ledge transitions to corner right so ledge and corner if you're strong there then you're gonna escape uh disadvantage much more often than if you're good at getting out of a juggle for example um so those i think are impactful and then like just the nil out of shield that's the one where i see the most potential like the shulk player in these like that is that's the tech. That's the one you want to explore, uh, especially because like when you're in shield, right? Like that is like the dynamic of shield is like you're 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 strong because you're hard to hit, but you're immobile. And what nil does is it gives you mobility from shield. So now it's not just like you're shielding, but you can transition that shield into uh, essentially a feint by showing your shielding and then instead being at a nil, what was nil one block uh, height shield, and then even get a reversal. So I think there's a lot of potential there. I agree with Tony that we're probably not going to see it, um, which is a shame because I think um, I think it's powerful, but I also get it because so the way I think about it is like if you're like the 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 dynamic of a shield that is a normal shield versus the dynamic of a shield from which you can nil are so distinctly different that learning something like that is so hard to do right because it's not just like oh i need to nail out a shield no you're treating the act of shielding differently uh entirely so yeah i will also specifically note that the anvil or the the ironless anvil refreshing your ledge grab is very important on the wood base stages so any stage where you can normally uh, or where they're going to mostly mine wood, my understanding is that those stages uh, also restrict your ability to mine on the walls or place blocks so that you can uh, stall out normally. So the planking is worse on those stages. And so it's just uniquely valuable on those cases. In addition to just always having an emergency, oh, well, I'm actually checkmated here on the ledge. So now I'm not by just Ooh. pressing a button. I'm going to correct this for a second. He actually had an anvil in these clips. They were just hidden behind his controller configuration. Okay. okay. So he needs an anvil to refresh his okay, thank so God. That makes okay. a little more Yeah, I was going to say, well, I was like, hold up. That if that's the weird. case, yeah. then you wouldn't no. care if they kill the crafting table because you would just like ledge drop. Yeah, doing up air, up air. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Good, he, good thing you caught that. I was like, I was like, yo, yeah. I'm about to start time people out with Steve. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, but like, it, it, no, he hit it behind the controller input. No, that's my bad. I should have seen that because he had the the resources. Thank there. God. Okay. No, you need the anvil. You need the anvil. Um, the nice thing is though, what he is showing is like you can anvil 
and then do like empty anvils a couple of times to stall out more because when he empty anvils he kind of like floats right mm -hmm. uh so he can he can he can win a couple of seconds by uh anviling and then has have his less invisibility back so okay okay it's not that bad guys it's not that bad <laughs> so um, ben, what, what do you think is the strongest one of the all the old ones oh, you... yeah i mean like i said like the shield like out of shield nil like it's just crazy um I, I think again, I, I do agree with what Tony's saying. Like ultimately it's like these guys aren't doing it. So like why would that be impactful if they're just gonna pretend it doesn't exist, apparently? But um I do hope that we get to a timeline where people do start pressuring. And this is I, I would like to say that obviously Steve's need to like get this stuff more and get better at something that's so ridiculous and such a strong asset in their arsenal. But also like People are so bad at learning matchups in this game. Uh, and really, because I, I know we have a lot of unique characters, but I think where you have some of these key characters, like I'll, I'll just say it, just being someone who's played like Brawl Sonic like for all this time, it's hilarious sometimes just to see that there's so many things that have consistently been good throughout different iterations of a game, and people still don't know the basic things from it, right? So, like, at some point, I'm just like, yeah, Steve's, you need to learn this. But also, if y'all just keep dying the the cart every short up cart every single time, and they don't, yeah. and they and they're winning, like, why should they do that? Why should yeah. they exert themselves because you guys aren't even putting them in a position where they need to? So it, it's a like you know, it's it's a push and pull, right? So like, um, definitely want to see them push the but there's definitely some out there that do and they even say sometimes i'm like i don't even i just like doing this honestly i don't know even know why i need to do this because <laughs> these people just died a cart anyways like yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter you know so um it, it's both sides right like we, we got to up our game too in order for the steves to, to go to the next level right but um yeah out of shield nil for me I, I think it's the most powerful, but maybe not the most practical for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so moving on to day four. Let's <laughs> let me try to not fool you guys in the future. Uh, we got easy coyote, coyote jumping and backwards easy coyote jumping. Um, so basically, you dash forward, enter your skid animation, and then you, uh, you do that by basically resetting your stick to neutral. And then you press down forward, which gives you a runoff plus fast fall. Uh, and then if you jump at roughly the same time, uh, the fast fall speed counteracts your, uh, well, your upwards momentum from the jump. And you get a very, very short, uh, well, very, very short, short hop, essentially. This makes it easier, for example, for Pyra to do like uh, uh, down airs over the ledge because she doesn't have to go through the entire upwards part of her jump or something like by left, same thing. Um, yeah, so this one is very straightforward, very universal. Um, I think someone uh, someone popularized the coyote jumping, or like I think they called it phantom ledge jump. There, uh, mm -hmm. it, I think coyote jump is, is 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 a good name because you're using your coyote time to uh, to fast fall, and then you're jumping because you get a little bit of grace period when you run off an edge before you can jump, right? Which is called a uh, coyote jump. We used to call um, it a kuma jump too, right? If I'm not mistaken, kuma jump. Have you ever heard of Akuma Jump? That was like way, way back. I think that was also in Brawl and Smash 4 type, like... I think that was a specific application of... Of it, right? But it's like a very simple... Right. Yeah. So, um... No, anyways, go ahead. Yeah. Tony, I, I remember you saying that people are already using Coyote Jumps, right? Uh, yeah, specifically in Falcon-based combos to finish Near, usually near ledge trap positions so that you can get a lower up air because it usually uh, led to the, being able to get a bigger extension window for things like knee follow-ups and such. Uh, but obviously, any character with a decent fast fall or a particularly short jump, is it's useful for them. It's just technically challenging. Uh, I think that this, in conjunction with the Wibbits, are more just an example of something universal that particularly favors uh, Steve for just being a good character. And so this is where we come down to what we mentioned before about movement stats. So people tend to focus on horizontal movement speed. Uh, this is an example of vertical movement speed just being very powerful and also walk acceleration being very powerful. These are just usually less important on for most characters, but they are still superlative movement stats that Steve has. In this case, it's the, the jump height and then also 
Uh, he has a solid fastfall. Not great, but it's enough in conjunction with his jump. And then obviously having a high walk acceleration speed is going to also emphasize that. So this is one of those cases of the rich get richer and the poor get more. And so what we're going to have is this is another example of that even though he already had so many things he could do that worked well, he's going to continue accumulating advantage from that as the game continues on, which we've established at this point that Steve has a lot of room to grow, even though he's already number one. Yeah. What do you yeah. guys think, Charles and Ben? Yeah, for me, it's uh, this is another one where I believe it's a lot easier to do on box, right? So it's going to be a little bit more... I, like I, I feel like if we do see any of these buffs come through, it'll mm -hmm. this will be like one of the last ones we see players apply just because it it just has a very niche reward where it's like, oh, it's like Wiveting, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, do all this grinding for this movement option. And it's like, we know mm -hmm. that's strong, right? But when there's other tech, and um, I'll, we haven't gone over it yet, but I, the, the strongest one, in my opinion, is coming up. But there's other tech that takes way less effort that the reward is a little bit more black and white, mm -hmm. where the reward is like, oh, okay, like I just get more damage or I just get this defensive option from ledge, right? Like there's these specific moments where you know it's strong. Um, this one is going to be a little harder because like obviously you can do it off platforms and you can do it off the ledge which those are areas but the real reason why i strong with steve, steve particularly is you can do it anywhere right yeah. yeah so i think this one will be a little bit harder to one uh conceptualize of where to use it and two like the actual execution so mm -hmm. i i do think that this one is along with wiveting if we do see top player top steve players apply any of this tech which we even went over like that's kind of a long shot, but like, even if they do, these are probably going to be one of the later ones that get applied because of how complex it is. But I do think it also, is strong on paper. They apply best with nil also, which again, if they're again, not already yes. implemented nil. N they, nil, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you're not even doing step one. This is like step two and three, like shit, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, man. Um, you know, this one is cool. It's, um, so... I do think, like we talked about, obviously it's like it's more favorable for Steve. Uh, I do think, however, at least I hope that over time people start utilizing this more, especially if like there's an easier way to do this because there are a lot of great routes for characters that are meaningful, right? Like you get these extensions that are going to be the difference between you actually getting a kill here in the corner, right? Which is such a powerful thing, right? Your goal is to, like we talked about, doing the juggling, transitioning to the ledge, all these kind of things. And like, if you're able to get those conversions there that can just straight up kill, like that's so beneficial. So um, despite, you know, it being very clearly something that uh, works to Steve's favor, you know, but like any of these other characters, I do think there are a lot of characters like I know Tony already like mentioned um, Falcon. Um, I know like there's for a while there's been stuff that's popped up around like Lucina and stuff too and the extensions that come there as well. And like there's just a lot of characters that do get a good amount from this. Uh, if And I think once people explore those combo routes a bit more, um, especially now with the ease of use and, uh, you know, consistency that can come here then I think we'll see it more implemented as universal tech instead of something just lol, Steve wins again. Yeah, I think this is this is one that some characters will benefit a lot more from this than others, especially characters that have like aerials that go through ledge that are not like stall, and, like stall aerials, right? So like Sephiroth or Rob, they don't care about this. But I think, again, something like Pyra could really benefit from this to get basically two frame downers more easily or even a shulk right because like you get to set up your landing fair that goes through the stage like immediately um so i think there's a few characters out there i think for example if you're playing lucina you're using this to get like uh, an easy down air without having to do the rising part of your jump i think that's very powerful as well um so i think uh, personally i think the uh this one is more applicable to non steve on like in terms of accessibility but it's more powerful on steve if you're doing like the nil stuff right okay so this one this next one is a bit of a it's a bit of a dud we can go over it real quick it's salt uh basically it's like a shield at ledge trump so what he's doing is he's shooting at ledge and then he does jump b reverse up b to immediately grab the ledge and get like a trump uh a little bit faster than doing like a shield drop into a trump um yeah i don't know 
if you guys want to go over this one at all um i think this is literally good. just like oh okay okay yeah tell, tell me about it charles <laughs> okay so uh we work with the pilot discord here at smash university so when they saw this they were all like freaking out and or maybe not freaking out but they're like oh this is good for pilot or any other characters with like quick tethers and stuff like that um i it it, it also has mind games because it just if you're reverse shield by the ledge I mean, when you break it down, you're giving up a lot, right? You're a not you're not attempting a two frame, so that's already pretty big. So uh, in terms of the sacrifice, it's pretty big. And with how inconsistent trumps are, it's not like Smash Four where it's like, oh, if I get the trump and you don't react, I'm getting a back air. Like I'm getting this tipper mm -hmm. back air, or I'm getting this bylith up B, and it's spiking you. Um, I just think it's a nice curveball that you're going to be able to throw. I don't think you should base your ledge trapping or your ledge game uh, completely off of it. I think it's a nice little curveball you can throw out. Um, now, does Steve have like other crazy options for ledge trapping or two framing? Absolutely. So, but I do think it's a nice little curveball option that is not very hard to execute. So we could see this being applied like right now. You know, it's not too crazy to execute. And yeah, I think it's really good. I think there's even exploration that can. Uh, you can mix up from it because like you're doing it from shield reverse shield at ledge right but you could go into your skid no, animation you can do four you can do four forward facing shield too oh okay you're oh because you're b reversing right, right and then yeah. yeah so i mean because of that you could like run to the ledge and do this option as well right like it doesn't have to be out of shield but you probably want to shield just so you don't get hit by a specific character's up b mm -hmm. but if it's like falcon or someone's up b that doesn't like peek above the ledge with a hitbox you could run to that location and do the trump as well right so uh, and we saw a lot of this kind of stuff with like Zero Suit in Smash 4, where she had like the side B um, Trump, like it was really, really quick, right? right. So kind of reminds me of that. Obviously, like I said, trumping is not as consistent as the previous game. So I just think this one is very applicable, like instantly applicable. So and That's the fair. and it's not it's not the rewards not as guaranteed because of you know if someone reacts really quick, they could just buffer a, a, trump, a ledge option or even, I don't know the exact frame dead on. I don't know if it's like humanly reactable or not, but I think that's where we start getting into the threshold of like, if this is humanly reactable, then it's not as good, right? Uh, but if it's not, then it's like, oh snap. And then even if it is humanly reactable, if it's like along the thresholds, like is a nervous human going to react to this? If this yeah. is the first time they saw it and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I do think this one has value just because of how applicable it is instantly. And like, but I do understand the things you're sacrificing. You're sacrificing two framing. You're sacrificing a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's my take on it. What do you so think this is entirely human reactable. It's uh, you, I believe in the example it uses a short hop cancel up B version, which should be uh, frame twenty six total after the okay, jump squat. Yeah. The thing there is that you need to consider that there's also the feint of just shielding there and then rolling in, because in that position, if they're just reacting to the shield disappearing then even though they are reacting to it consistently, not necessarily always correctly. And so it's ultimately a binary of, am I supposed to press a button? And then on top of that, if you are supposed to press a button, it's which button did you press? Because you have to consider, even if it's something like uh, using neutral get up, what if Steve just drops shields and reads shields? Things like that. And so usually what you're going to be reacting to is just an upward momentum. But if you are going to do something like ledge jump in response, then Steve can actually do something like full hop out of shield and then just back air, which is something Steve's already doing. And in general, I believe you can see, uh, I'm pretty sure we've seen top Steve's use this just very occasionally as a surprise factor. But the idea is that this is one of those things that typically doesn't work repeatedly. However, it can work repeatedly because of what it does set you up for. It just requires you to understand how your opponents are going to respond to you and how their decision-making process works around that. Because if you do, then you can condition your opponent to do some pretty rewarding things for you. And then, of course, uh, if they put down their controllers so that they don't fall for any feints, then they just get ledge trumped at that point. So. Yeah. Um, I... I just think the thing is you're only saving a couple of frames over just doing like shoe drop less trump. You know what I mean? Like that is that is kind of like the downfall for me is like uh, not not the downfall, but more like, OK, I'm not really seeing the 
uh, the application. So like, if you look at the video, it actually looks like like it's a pretty fast option, all things considered. I know like the up is like frame 20 plus, but he doesn't go through the entire up animation before he starts latch snapping, right? The snap occurs in the up startup. So I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's 20 plus frames before he actually grabs the latch. I think it's a little bit faster, but I think if you conclude, like if you include the jump squat, basically what Tony said, right? Um, but having tried things like shield drop less jump, I do think, like, in practice, um, it's just a little bit too slow. Because realistically, there are two less timings, right? Like, either someone does something immediately, or they wait for you to cover the immediate pressure and then tries to get past that, right? And then every layer afterwards is just, like, a repeat of the first two options. Where, like, you're waiting for the option and going past that, waiting for... Right? So, um, what does this realistically cover? It covers a delayed option. But if you're shielding close to the ledge... There's almost never a situation in which a delayed option is powerful if someone is shielding in a position that's close to the ledge. I could be wrong, and like maybe there are some patterns that do really well against immediate options from that position. Uh, but as far as I know, if you see that, you can kind of just roll in, and uh, there's very little that especially a character like Steve can do about that. Um, or you can gamble with things like uh, jump footstool which is really powerful if someone's shielding by the ledge. Something that Void pioneered in Smash 4, which is still good, but just people don't really ledge trap from that position anymore. Um, so yeah, I just don't think... I, I don't think it is very strong, um, but I am I am open to being proven wrong. I think it's it, it's neat either way. Um, but yeah, Bam, did you have any closing thoughts for us? No, man. I mean, honestly, just like kind of like similar thing. I actually think I lean my kind of more to what you're saying, Ramsey's where like I feel like it's... I feel like there's some options there for it. I don't think that it's going to be, it doesn't add enough variance, like important variance, I feel like, for it to be like crazy. I think it's like, yeah, it's cool. A little bit faster, you know, maybe you get caught lacking the first time you see it or whatever like that. But ultimately, like what it's covering and stuff like that, it's like kind of like more of the same. Um, and f funny that you mentioned Void because just even watching them play um, like earlier, um, like, literally yesterday like it was just funny because mm -hmm. there were some people like chill on legend just like just how he's moving around it and like um what you said like jump foot soul etc right so like and then like be reverse needles or whatever to like maneuver around and it's like yeah like it doesn't someone's just like kind of waiting there and they do something afterwards and like you're pretty yep. good so yeah i don't know well it, it remains to be seen maybe there's a additional thing there that can come in time um and it that that variance that change in timing is going to be the difference but for right now i don't really see it as much i've just seen it kind of like a like you know a mix up a little quick it's neat. yeah exactly and i think what charles said is very accurate as well like steve's last traps were fucking crazy like he can set up some insane like just option coverage that like you just if you don't know you die right uh, so you're paying. There's a lot of opportunity costs for doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move on. Day six. We're almost there. This is FDA. This one again is a very straightforward one. Uh, it is it is futsu down air air dodge uh, option select. So basically, we know Steve can futsu down air and it kills ridiculously early. Um, but the issue is if they you know like if if they do a safe aerial, um, you generally don't want to go for the down air. Um, so what this does is this option selects the down air with air dodge so that if you get the footstool animation, um, it sends out a down air. And if you uh, footstool a shield or an animation, it just sends out an air dodge and it lets you just like directional air dodge away or cross them up and be relatively safe. Um, I know this one, there was, a, there was a similar option select found by um, Ky Kylie Farah, I think is their tag, the Purple Falco. Uh, for for Ubbies, where you know, like Falco can footstool Ubby, Wolf can footstool Ubby, Shulk can footstool Ubby, and so for these characters, um, it is good to have an option select because if you're wrong about the Ubby, you die. Um, so a similar uh, footstool, a similar option select was was found before for uh, Ubbies at least, and I think uh, the too. Reflex Wonder exactly found one for Downbies as well. Mm. Uh, but now there's one for Downers. I think for Downers it's a little bit less applicable because even if they like even if you fuck down air shield, oftentimes um, your down air, it's not as risky as like an up B or like a rest. Um, but uh, for things like Sephiroth, I think especially this is extremely applicable because Sephiroth down air, you know, he's a light character. He really doesn't want to take that punishment. Steve down air, you know, kind of safe already. 
like yeah, yeah. you know it's ironically like, like more important for all the or the characters honestly for not like, steve yeah because yeah. yeah. steve don't give a damn if he does dare he don't care exactly like 90 percent of the time you're shield poking anyway like loki um so yeah i think i think it's neat i think it's especially neat for not steve so like in the week of steve it's actually funny in the tweet he tagged ssvu steve and ssvu sephiroth so he knows um what do you think, Tony? What do you think about the importance of this option select? I think there's a lot of meta relevant characters that it's important for. Obviously, like Rob, Sonic, et cetera, et cetera, all are going to oh, be yeah. able to use this to augment their out of shield options where they're already uh, fairly short and also don't like taking big risks. So uh, I agree with everybody. It's much better for not Steve characters than Steve. It is still better for Steve because it optimizes his resource usage yep. when in doubt and it allows you to. Uh, uh, there's, I believe, another 50-50 you can apply there based on whether you're going for footstools or not. And so for Steve, it is still useful. It adds a dimension of complexity to his gameplay should he desire it. And again, this is one of those embarrassment of riches opportunity where it's it's very good for Steve. It's just not relatively good for Steve. So... Uh, if people were actually punishing the down airs, which to be fair is very possible, but people are just so bad against normal down airs as is, why would you, why would you bother? Yeah. Like you're you're going to be losing equity by playing the game better. Mm-hmm. So just stick to what you're doing. It, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. This one's funny. Um, I've always been like an advocate for um a, a lot of like OSs in this game uh, and just in general in the series. Like it's something that um that was actually one of the reasons i got into like smash labs back in the day and like in brawl and smash 4 i tried to push like where i could too it's unfortunate a lot of this stuff still isn't used nearly enough um especially for certain characters like it's insane like i was i think the the waft one the like for jigs rest um i know we talked a little bit uh before we got on about like the you know the parry ones too with counter and whatnot like there's so many great os's in this game especially in a game where a lot of characters tend not to have as devastating out of shield right um i mean that's one of the reasons why a character like game of watch does well you know that's one of the reasons why you know a character like bale finds their footing right and so it's like when you are able to add these os's now you have these really like you have relatively low risk. Obviously, like, you know, someone reads that, like, you know, you miss it and then they punish the air dodge or whatever it may be, right? But it's, like, relatively, like, low risk and you can get, like, some characters get insane reward, man. Insane reward, you know? Um, I know we talked about it before with, like, Ness and, like, side magnet stuff out of, like, Footstool and, like, you know, all the sorts of things. Like, there's just a lot of characters that can get a ton. So, um, yeah, th- this tech is definitely better <laughs> for so many characters, like, not Steve. Um, and, yeah, when I saw this one at first, I was very happy, but then also sad because it's, I think it's just one of those things that people are just not going to do, um, which sucks because this stuff is really, really strong. And I think all, some of this stuff can be like game changing if people implement it correctly. Um, on the other side of the coin, it's like, I, I hope that we're getting to a point where people are seeing this stuff enough or maybe they have a change of heart, man, and they actually start like implementing these things. But yeah, it's it's cool. It's good stuff. I I actually think that top players might be more willing to do it just because we are seeing top players footstool dare. We are seeing that. Yeah. So I mean, True. we like especially people that are veterans of the game, like footstool down air or footstool into something has been a thing since brawl. So like even early ultimate, like there would be so much veterans or just people that know about the game that are just like, man, why don't top players do footstool mm-hmm. options, right? Um even particular like well there there was some players that would do it like shout to zan zan the footstool lord he's been oh, doing yeah. it since, since, and, since and, day and, one yeah, baby day one of ultimate My day zan, one <laughs> zan was doing footstool shit like oh, yeah. so he was it, preaching mm-hmm. yes yes um but i i think now we're getting to the point where top players are like okay i've worked on my fundamentals to the point where it's like now i'm getting kind of like a little bit of diminishing returns from how good i am fundamentally let's kind of dip into the tech and stuff like that right which is a very common cycle we've seen throughout many smash games so now top players have to kind of dip into these uh dark arts if you will to up their game just that little bit because now it it, makes a difference right now it makes a difference Mm -hmm. you know year one of the game everyone's still figuring out the game fundamentally so they put all their uh, coins into that which makes sense obviously um 
So now we're seeing top players actually do footstool options out of shield. So this is just adding a couple inputs to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to make it a little safer. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're actually trying to play Sephiroth and win tournaments with that character, which is kind you of to. kind of a meme in at uh, to begin with. But right. I mean if you're if you are doing that, if you've already gone that far to be like, I am trying to win tournaments with Sephiroth. Fuck, man! Just add the air dodge input. Like it, you're, you need to, right? Yeah, like your yeah, character is. So you're halfway there. Yes, yeah. exactly. You're already halfway there. Like if you're not footstool daring with Sephiroth, then you're not really serious. Or the reason why you're not doing it is because you feel like it's too risky, right? Mm -hmm. So now you have like this is gives players no excuse, even if they're down air or whatever is total dog shit, and it like doesn't really do that much damage, and it's too risky. You know the risk reward's not there. This now finally skews the risk reward. So I think. This is a big deal. We're already seeing top players do footstool um, downers or footstool options. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, yeah, yeah, just options after footstool out of shield. So hopefully, I, I feel like they would implement this. Yep. In I, hope so. I hope so, man. Like, honestly, like, even beyond, sh like, stuff out of shield, there's a lot of OSs in this game that people should be using um, to really close the gap with a lot of things and kind of remove some of this guesswork um, and really optimize their, like, punish game and... Um, yeah, I, I really do hope to see that. I mean, we see it's crazy. Like when you go from traditional FGC to like Smash and how we perceive these things, and it's like to them, like too, that stuff is just a core aspect of their game. Like you have to be using the OS. Like what, what are you talking about? You don't you don't use these things. Like then you're you're not you're not playing the same game we're playing, right? You know. So well, yeah. to to be fair, a lot of OSs that are commonly used in fighting games are less complex than having to react to a landing aerial, doing your basically instant double jump in the right direction. There's analog input as well, right? Like, I I, I, I get what you're saying, right? Like, OSs are not a part of Smash culture, and I think that's something that should change. But let's not underestimate, like, how much more... Oh, there's more nuance, Mental sure. stack, exactly. Yes, yeah, there's there more nuance, 100%. I agree. I, I think one thing to add here is, like, I, I honestly feel like this is most powerful for Sonic out of, like, any character in the game. Because, like, yeah, for Seth, for example, it's super important. But the issue with Seth is, like, if you get the footstool and they, like, shield your footstool and you air dodge away, even if you're safe, you're probably still going to get pressured because your frame data sucks ass, right? So it's, like, even if you don't get punished, you're still in a shit situation. Whereas a character like Sonic, he's fast enough to, like, air dodge away and probably still have, like, some options to uh, deal with the, the follow-up pressure. So... Yeah, but looking forward to seeing that. I think the same uh, goes for, for example, Rob. Like, you gotta just wait, just presses down tilt. If you're too late, you get, you know, you get caught. Um, but yeah, like you guys said, I think this is really like one of those things that should just be, if you're trying to win, why not? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, it's it's not that big of an investment and the payoff is decent enough for it to be valuable. Now we get into the favorite, by far the most likes out of every tweet in this series. It is uh, Mine Abrupt Dodge. So I'm going to quickly explain how it works and we can, gonna, can we, get, we can get into it. So a, a mine cycle takes 10 frames, apparently, which means that while you're mining, you cannot just shield until a full cycle is over, which means that if someone throws something at you and you're stuck at like the beginning of your cycle, you can have up to like nine, 10 frames of lag before you can shield. But if you hold mine, then your mining is cancelable into jump. So you got to keep mining. You got to keep holding B. And then you can cancel the mining into a jump, which then allows you to cancel that into an air dodge. Um, what does that mean? That basically means that if you get stuck at the beginning of your cycle, you can, uh, you know, hold B, jump out of it, and then air dodge, which allows you to react to things that are normally not always reactable while you're mining. Um, so this is simultaneously fucking loony and also like weird i think i think it's very hard to judge how impactful it's going to be but just the fact that he has this mix-up like conceptually fundamentally it's just crazy to me um charles why don't you why don't you give me your your take on 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 mad yeah yeah we'll do so bam, bam had to dip out real quick so you know thank you bam for showing up for Appreciate pretty much uh, most of the most of the episode and i know bam that also yeah. thinks that this tech is very strong i think tldr no matter how you look at it, I know some people are like, well, I'm just going to run up to Steve and bait the directional air dodge. Ha ha ha. You can't even like, obviously there's counterplay. <laughs> there's always counterplay to stuff, right? For the most part. Um, the way you just should think about this tech is you're making mining safer. What is the backbone of Steve's game plan? It's mining, right? So when you make mining safer, because now you can cancel out of it into literally anything, it doesn't have... 
th that's another thing that pisses me off and makes me annoyed about the people like, oh, I'm going to do this or that or whatever. It's like, well, he could know could now obviously we don't really see steve's kneeling or whatever but you 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 could do a lot of other options you can do anything you want right um obviously steve has a really strong directional air dodge so i mean that's a really good option that's very surface level but uh you know when we get into the later parts of the meta development we could see this going into nil and at the end of the day it just makes mining safer and the Steve could just continue mining if you run up to him. Like it's the, there's there's obviously counterplay on counterplay and stuff like that. But TLDR mining is safer, and mining is a very important part of Steve's game plan. So just that alone should be enough to make make you think that this is pro the best tech. This is the best tech in the whole entire week, and it's not even close. It's very strong in terms of like what impact it gives you, and then two, it's very applicable. It's like super easy to do. So you, you have both of those on your side. So I, I think it's a no-brainer. What do you think, Tony? So in my case, uh, I can think of several players' game plans versus specific Steve players who will need to actually rewrite part of the base game plan because so much has relied on certain numbers being true. Like, for example, uh, it, without naming names, there are certain Steve players whose base reaction time after input let delay is like 25 frames. And then there's going to be players, uh, I believe that same player is, uh, if their anticipation is present, then they're going to get all the way up to like 19, 20 frames. So if they had committed to mine, then that cuts that down. And so where we were at was uh, you basically want to condition them into thinking that it's safe to mine and then just burst them on response to the mine. And if they double mine, which most Steve players are going to do, then they're usually going to commit to two mines, whenever, or two or three mines plus whenever they mine. And so even though you'll be reacting too late and you'll be minus if you're responding to it, in practice, usually they would just repeat it so often that you'd essentially just preempt that and then they'd get hit by the burst anyways. And so this is going to be less consistent of a concept to follow. And this has been a very big part of helping the various Steve killers in the States to counter the Steve players is just taking advantage of that niche interaction and Steve players in particular being vulnerable to it. So uh, I don't know if that's still going to be completely out of the window and it's probably going to be on a case by case basis, but for the most part, uh, just in certain player versus player interactions that's going to completely go back to the drawing board so that is actually a big deal yeah i dude i agree i think so again i think this option in and of itself is not super strong right i think like air, air dodging out of mining um, air dodge is super punishable but just the fact that you can no longer say oh he's stuck in mining lag i have like i have a window that is crazy absolutely insane i think it fundamentally changes how you shoot approach mining and even if it has to do with like the cycle of mining where they're in right so like still if someone is mining you're assuming some sort of lag right but if they're at the end of a cycle realistically they don't have any lag you know stuff like that is, is still true um it, it, it still changes the way you approach the dynamic right because now uh at any point in the mining cycle they have a defensive option from which they generally don't reversal but they have a defensive option right so like that means that you can put yourself in a bad spot. Let's say you commit to a dash attack, they air dodge out of it. Um, even if you don't get pressure, they get access to like maybe some sort of close range mix up or a burst strength mix up, stuff like that. If they're stronger at that than you think about something like a Sephiroth, right? Um, so there's just, uh, it just opens up a new branch. I think that's the way you should look at it. And I think any situation is defined. Well, I, I think a lot of situations are defined by the amount of branches so like if you have like only two branches in a certain situations that you can kind of go down uh go down in terms of like your options then while it can be a strong situation it's ne not necessarily oppressive because the counterplay is very clear but when there's like 20 different branches out of a given situation not only can a few branches be extremely strong in which case you know for see if it would be something like jump mine card not only that but it's also complex so now you're not just dealing with strong options, but also with complexity. And that's just like, it's really hard to play against. Um, I Again, I think it's hard to say, like, realistically, how much this is going to impact things. Because again, as far as I know, um, 
like someone can just like stop mining early and just have like relatively little lag and be less lag uh, or have less lag than you thought they would, you know, right? Um, but it's it's hard to say uh, because again, these things come down to like small frames, right? Like small frame windows. The comparison between jump, air dodge, and shielding, I think, is like a difference of like two or three frames, which is not a lot. Um, so the impact of something like that, sometimes two or three frames can be make or break. Like for example, Samus Star Shot. Like as far like from my from what I saw in the demonstration, something like Samus Star Shot or Wolf Blaster, it's the difference between being able to react or not react. Um, is it the same for a lot of other situations? I'm not sure. I really am not sure. I just think like conceptually having this extra option available adds so much unnecessary complexity to to the mining dynamic. It's 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 weird. It's 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 annoying. Um, but it is it it is what it is. I think. Um, yeah, I I I think I think in reality, um, I don't think it's going to influence as many situations as people think. I think the crazy thing about this is this is just like again the complexity gets increased, and that is that's like the hardest thing about playing Steve. I think uh, Steve on paper is not as strong as people say he is, but I think just like the 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 difficulty of playing against him is what makes the character insane. Like, there's so many little nuances, so many, like, uh, small things. And the thing is, like, if you're wrong, you're generally going to get punished. Whereas if Steve is wrong in a lot of situations, you're generally not going to get punished. You're ge or, sorry, you're generally not going to punish him because you have to be specific. And this is just, like, another layer, another factor in which you have to be specific against Steve. And I think that is, uh, that is the crazy part about this. So uh, yeah, uh, the 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 realistic impact of this we've yet to see, but I think just the conceptual addition of having to deal with this when playing against Steve is just crazy. Yeah, yeah. I think even uh, like if there's there, there there's other scenarios too where I feel like I one I feel like it's gonna be a little hard to track these interactions and be like, oh, that's where the tech was used. That's where it mattered, right? Um, you you might it, it'll be so hard to miss if you're just like watching a match right and you're not specifically looking for it but there's even specific scenarios where it's like oh there's a, a wall up steve's mining you just got over the wall and instead of steve trying to like okay i'm gonna like try to offensively uh hit you like maybe jump and then like go for up airs or something like that if he has a lot of stage he could be like you know what i'm gonna cancel this in di directional air dodge way my directional air dodge is so far and yeah. you like can't you literally can't even get to me at that point right so there's there are literal scenarios where it's like oh steve could disengage safely and it's a thousand percent safe like your character doesn't have like the air mobility slash um fall speed to like get to where steve is going to and even then those are, those are just like those are things that steve couldn't do like before he could fight in those scenarios and usually it's favorable for him to fight because up air and up tilt are so strong but just having the option to just disengage if you want to play it safer and stuff like that that's fantastic so i i think this to me it's like a clear cut like this this is the best one in terms of like when you're balancing uh how easy it is to do and like what you get out of it like i i don't even play steve and i can do this tech right now like all you do is what hold jump right instead of pressing you hold it. b you, ho oh, you, you hold b instead you, okay of releasing it yeah. okay cool Hold a button instead of releasing it. Everyone that's watching this video can do that. So you <laughs> now have that, like, it, and what you get out of it is pretty impactful. It's simple, but it's pretty Notably impactful. not forward smash. Oh, Notably true. not forward smash. <laughs> Dude, the, can I talk about the greatest self-report of the modern Smash community? Oh, sure, yes, yes, yes. Did you, did you see the video, Charles? Which one? Is that oh, including the... God. Is that uh, competing with the? Uh, oh well, players have always used short hop fast fall. Short hop fast fall there. Oh the, with my the young link. god! I, I did see. I did yes. see a Twitter quote retweet. That oh was very my <laughs> god! No, this one is worse. This one is worse. This one is oh, way, worse? way, way worse. So like, someone posted a clip and they said it's over, bros, and they were just mining, and then they stopped mining and they forward smashed. Right. It's just literally what Jake has been doing since like day one, and then people were like. Oh my God! The why you the mad cancel can be done with forward smash? No, it was just a normal f mind stop forward smash. You guys are talking about banning Steve. You don't even know how mining works. What are we doing? Oh. I dude, it, it it made me so upset because these are the people I've been talking to. I've been arguing with in good faith. I'm out here. I'm like I'm assuming you know what you're talking about because you have a strong opinion. 
And you're out, and these are the same people that are like, oh my god, you can cancel mining with forts. You don't even know what a normal mining cycle looks like. I am, dude, I am so thoroughly impressed by the degree to which people expose themselves through this tweet. It is fucking insane. This, this, this should not exist. I have lost all faith. I am never to pay. I'm never talking about Steve with people again. There you go. Because like, if you don't even know how a mining cycle works, he stops mining, it's 10 frames of lag. If you... Oh, and uh, you know what the worst thing is, Charles? Oh, you know what the fucking worst thing is? The, the, the video had the frame data right there. No one even bothered checking the frame data. Oh. I was I woke up and the video was like 11 hours old or something. And like uh, only then were people like, wait, this is just a normal mining cycle. <laughs> no one even, dude, I was, oh. And I'm sure there are nuances about Steve that I get wrong, right? Like I was just wrong about the anvil, like sure, right? Like I am no saint either when I'm arguing. I'm not coming here from a perspective of like, I know everything. So, so you know, like everyone should know everything. But if you're complaining about Steve and you don't even know this like very basic thing, you like, I'm sorry, bro. I, dude, you don't get to complain about Steve if you don't know how mining works. I am, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's just a rule. Those are it's like, imagine I, someone. I can't say anything either. I I I recently had somebody credit. I, I said, "Hey, why aren't you uh, why aren't you planking on Smashville?" And they're like, "Dude, that's not how this mechanic works." This, so yeah, I, I people get it wrong all the time. But you can't like that's look at fine. Steve just doing Steve things he's been doing since literally day one, yes. and then say, "Oh my God, they finally broke the character." Three years later, oh. they figured out you could press the A button after the B button. It's so, like, okay, so I'll, 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 gi I'll, gi I'll give them this. The, the, you, the, the creator of the video used AV Smash, and it lets you buffer a smash attack. So you get a forward smash on the first frame after the binding cycle. So I'll give you this. Most of your local thieves probably don't buffer the forward smash. They probably release B and then wait way too long and press forward smash. So fine, right? Fine. It's faster than what you're used to. But still, you should know. You should at least, at least check the frame data. At least, like reference a little bit yeah. before you scream bloody murder from the rooftops it is it is oh it it there you guys have no idea how this impacted my psyche it's it's crazy i'm i'm struggling with this on the daily these people i'm i'm not nah, i'm done i said all i i said all there is to say it's the greatest self-report of the modern smash community you guys don't get to say shit about steve if you don't know how fucking mining works i am so sorry but that's just how it is that's the rules i don't make the rules i'm just here to preach the good word yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad that you went through that pain so you don't go on the streets of Twitter to argue with people that probably don't know what they're talking about. So now that you get, you get to save a bit of your time, Ramses. And that, I mean, that's exactly. why that's why it's like, dude, half the time I'm talking about like uh, Steve Ban stuff, like the first question I'll ask someone is like, do you know what nil stands for? And if they don't know what it is, I'm like, I'm not going to I'm not going to discuss anything with you. Like you're you're talking about banning a character and you don't even understand how this character works. And like one of the baseline texts of what the, like makes the character broken or whatever. Right. So it's like there's a lot to be discussed in terms of just like lack of information and stuff like that with this character. And I, I'm I've been complaining about Smash characters since I was a high schooler, so I definitely know the repetition of complainer. yes. You you, you got to be a professional complainer. You got to like back it up with all the frame data and do this this know about the matchups and stuff like that. So there are professional complainers, and then there are very amateur complainers where they just like kind of like oh my favorite top player said this, and now I'm gonna bitch about it too, even though I know nothing, and they're just like follow whatever. So. That's a step your wine up. Yes, exactly. If you guys are watching this, make sure to step up your complaining game. And if you guys take, did, yeah, take this as a lesson. Take this yes. as a lesson. Step up your complaining game. But if you guys like the content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you, uh, which Steve Tech you guys think is the strongest of the entire week. Um, obviously, there's a bunch of different tech. So yeah, I mean, we all. I think we all kind of share the same opinion on the strongest. But I'd like to know your guys' opinion too. Which one's the strongest, and maybe which one's the weakest as well. But until next time, class dismissed.